doing this session. So today I'm going to talk about our work on private data acquisition. This is a joint work with Ali Makhtoumi, Azar Akhmalikian, and my advisor at MIT, Asos. Oh, one last thing, stay between. Oh, okay. This yeah. is not working, apparently. Okay, sounds good. So, so the rise of machine learning applications has raised corporations' demand for data. And these companies actually collect this needed data in various approaches. Some companies actually offer payments to users in exchange for their data, while many companies collect this needed data as a byproduct of their service. However, this rapid growth of these data-driven applications has created a major concern about privacy. Let me elaborate our problem through an example. Let's say a medical institute or hospital, which we are going to denote it as a platform throughout this talk, wants to learn the efficacy of a drug, Theta. There are end users as patients that are interacting with this platform. In particular, user I's medical record, XI, is denoted is in the form of Theta, the parameter of interest, plus some noise, ZI. And for the sake of this talk, we are going to assume ZI are zero mean, IID, and bounded by half, which is just an arbitrary constant, and we denote the variance of ZI by bar. So the hospital is trying to learn an estimate of theta, which we denote it here by theta hat, as a function of medical record of users x1 to x1. So both the platform and the users want to learn the drug efficacy. The platform is offering the medicine, and the users are taking the medicine, and both want to know whether it's an effective one or not. However, users are worried about revealing their medical record throughout this process of learning theta. As you can see, the privacy issue around this apps that collect medical data of users has attracted a lot of attention over the past couple of years. And so the question is, can we still learn the drug efficacy while we somehow compensate users for their privacy loss? For instance, this article on Financial Times talks about paying users in exchange for their medical data. And actually, the article introduces a company which is aiming for charging far research pharma companies for the medical data and pay back to users who own that data. And actually, this company offers a spectrum of options from the ones that provide the highest level of privacy to the ones that provide the best estimate about this parameter of interest. And so here, the question would be, how should we decide on privacy allocations and these payments for compensations when users possibly have heterogeneous privacy demands? We are going to study this problem and similar problems around private data acquisition in this talk. In particular, we are going to start by talking about the data market architecture when we are collecting data from privacy-sensitive users. And we are going to propose two different architectures, central and local. And we are going to use the differential privacy framework to quantify privacy loss in both of these two architectures. Next, we are going to talk about the choice of estimator on the platform side. And we are going to answer this question that what is the optimal estimator when users have heterogeneous privacy demands? Finally, we are going to Design, talk about designing a mechanism that decides on privacy allocation and payments when users have these different privacy requirements. And we are going to provide efficient algorithmic solutions to solve the mechanism design problem that we pose. Before jumping to the first part, data market architecture, I should mention that there is a growing literature on data acquisition from privacy sensitive users. Due to the interest of time, I'm not going to go over the details of it. And I should just mention that the papers listed here are by no means uh, representing all the work, and I just highlighted a couple of papers. Several of these works use the differential privacy, but there are many other interesting papers that use different notions of privacy. For instance, a very interesting paper by Juba here and co-authors uses this idea that users decide on the accuracy of the data that they provide to the platform as a measure to control their privacy. So our work basically differs in terms of framework, result, and analysis from these works. Okay. Let me start with the first part, the architecture. The first architecture, the central, is the following. The users share their non-private and raw data with the platform. But they ask the platform to make the final estimate data hat private before releasing it to the public. In other words, in this setting, users have a trust on platform, but they do not trust the public. On the other hand, there is a more conservative architecture called local, in which the users even do not trust the platform. So user I passes her data through a privacy channel CI and shares a private version of her data denoted by x hat i with the platform. And because these inputs to platform are private, the final estimate will be private as well. 
As I said before, we are going to use differential privacy framework to, use the, to, to quantify the privacy loss in both of these two settings. Let's start with the central. An estimator take the hat is called epsilon i centrally differentially private if the following holds. Consider two parallel scenarios as you see in this image, in which the data of all users remained unchanged except user i. In other words, we only change the data of user i. And we look at the change in the output of the distribution. The definition requires that the distribution of the output, theta hat, the estimator, should change by at most e to power epsilon i. And as you can see, this means that sm smaller epsilon i means that the effect of user i's data will be smaller on the output of distribution. In other words, this means that the, the output will reveal less about the data of user i. That's why you can interpret epsilon i as the privacy loss level of user i. You have a question? Oh, sorry. so yeah, so smaller epsilon i means better privacy guarantee or lower privacy loss. So as you can see here in the definition, the definition depends on all users' data. And you basically look at the theta hat for defining the central case. In the local case, however, the definition of each user's privacy loss only depends on her corresponding privacy channel. A privacy channel CI is called epsilon i locally differentially private if the distribution of its output changes by at most e to power epsilon i when you change the input. And as you can see, this is a more restrictive definition because here you want for each user the channel to be private with this epsilon i parameter. Okay, so so far we defined the architectures. We said how we are gonna, we discussed how we are gonna characterize the privacy loss. Now let's go to the second part, choice of estimator on the platforms. So now let's say I give you this epsilon one to epsilon n for now. And let's focus on the central case for now. What do I mean? I'm asking that I want you to design an optimal, I want you to find an optimal choice of estimator, which is epsilon one to epsilon n, centrally differentially private. And so to answer this question, we really need to first say, what do we mean by optimal? Here, we are gonna use a common notion in statistics called minimax estimation error. What do I mean by that? Let me define it a step by step. Let's first look at estimation error. Let's say the data of our users are coming from a distribution P. Is it, is it, should it be epsilon and epsilon? Sorry? So I, I'm saying that epsilon one to n are fixed. Yeah. Yeah. So. Are they fixed when you choose them? No, no. For now, let's say someone give you epsilon one to epsilon n yes. and ask you to find the optimal estimator. Yeah, the optimal estimator is not. Is it epsilon? It should be theta or? Yeah, the optimal is theta hat. I, I, but those are parameters of the privacy guarantee that you're looking for. Not sure you can follow. Okay, okay. sorry. Then let's take it offline. Oh yeah, that, that's it. Okay. So what do we mean by estimation error? So the estimation error is simply the mean square error, the L2 norm squared of the difference between the estimator theta hat and the true mean theta corresponding to this distribution P. Now, let's say that this distribution P is coming from a family of distribution calligraphic P. And so I take the supremum over the whole family, and this will be my worst case estimation error. Now, when I say an estimator is optimal with respect to the minimax estimation error, what do I mean is that I find that estimator that satisfies this epsilon one to epsilon n central differentially private constraint, and at the same time minimizes this worst case estimation error. So this question has been answered in the literature for the case that epsilon i's are equal, and we know that linear estimator is in fact optimal. But there, is no, there has been no result, to the best of our knowledge, for the heterogeneous setting prior to this one. And the our first result is that we actually show that the linear estimator is, in fact, optimal up to a logarithmic factor for the heterogeneous setting as well. Before I state the result, let me say what do I mean by linear estimator. So users share their data with the platform, and the platform computes a weighted average sum of WIXI. Then the platform adds a Laplace noise with parameter 1 over eta to secure the, to preserve, to, to preserve the privacy that the user asked. And so the estimator would be sum of WIXI plus some Laplace noise. And what we show is that this estimator is optimal up to log n factor with respect to the minimax estimation error that I just defined when we take that calligraphic P as the family of almost surely bounded distribution, which matches our assumption of ZI being bounded by some constant. 
So I'm not going to go over the details of the proof, but I just want to give you a sketch of the idea to highlight especially what are the challenges compared to, let's say, the equal epsilon i case that I just highlighted. To do so, let's first assume that there is no data stochasticity. And what we only need to deal, there is no privacy demand. And what we only need to deal with is the data stochasticity or the noise in these ZIs. In that case, we know the optimal thing to do is just to put all, put all the weights equal and you get this rate of 1 over n, it's law of large number. Now, let's say we have this privacy demand. And let's say without loss of generality, the epsilon i's are sorted in this way that epsilon 1 is the smallest and epsilon n is the largest. This means that the data of user i should have the lowest impact on the estimator and data of user n could have the highest impact. And so this intuitively suggests that we should put weights in this order as well, right? W1, the weight of data of user 1 probably should be the smallest, while well, WN could be the largest. But this violates the idea that we had when we were looking for suppressing the effect of the noise ZI and making this WI closed. And in fact, what we observe is that if we go with this regime, we could end up putting too much weight on a tiny fraction of data from the last couple of users, and this could lead to a very suboptimal estimator. And in fact, it turns out that the optimal estimator is in the following way. There is a k for which for the first k users, we increase the weights and actually we increase it proportional to epsilon i. But then at some point, we should just keep it unchanged and cap it. And this turns out to be the optimal estimator. But even after making this observation, there are a couple of things that we need to address. First, we need to tune that k carefully so that we get the tightest bound. And second, we need to drive a lower bound. For the lower bound, we use a technique from a statistic called LOCAM method, which reduces the lower bound to a problem of changing the dis bounding the change in the distribution of theta hat when you change the distribution of x size. And actually, this particular est optimal estimator forces us to, get, to drive a bound which depends on KL divergence and TV distance of the distributions. Of course, I'm not going to go into the details due to the interest of the time, but I, what I want to highlight is that, in fact, if this epsilon i's were all equal, we didn't have any of these challenges, right? Because even for privacy demand, we just need to put all the weights equal, and we don't need to go through all of these issues. But here, even using each of these two divergences will lead to a suboptimal. OK, I'm going to stop on the sketch of the proof here. We have a similar result on the optimality of linear estimator for the local case which I'm going to skip due to the interests of the time. And I'm going to go to the last part of the talk, designing a mechanism. OK, so so far, I just assumed that epsilon 1 to n are given. But now a question is that how should we endogenize them, right? One thing that comes to mind is that let's say, for instance, you open the app to give your uh, medical data and they ask, ask you how much you care about your privacy. You choose something from 1 to 5, and the platform somehow endogenizes this epsilon. And this is the idea that we are going to take. We are going to assume each user has a privacy sensitivity coming from a distribution CI for user I coming from distribution FI. And we can look at CI as a per unit cost of privacy loss for user I. And so user I's are going to report this privacy sensitivity, but they, of course, could, different, could report something different in the hope that maybe they get better privacy. But actually, revelation principle here holds, and we could assume on, we could only focus on direct and truthful mechanisms. OK, now let me pose the mechanism. So first, we have these end users. They have this data xi, as I said, and they have this privacy sensitivity ci. The users are going to report their data in either central or local architecture, and they're going to report the privacy sensitivity ci prime. And the mechanism is going to report, turn back three different functions. First, ti, the payment as the compensation that I mentioned earlier for user i. Second, the privacy loss level allocated to user i, the epsilon i. And finally, the optimal linear And the platform should design these privacy loss levels and compensations to incentivize users to report their privacy sensitivity truthfully, meaning that they report CI prime equal to CI. And when we talk about incentivizing users, we really need to define their utility function first. Here, it would be easier to work with the cost function, so we are going to go with the cost. The cost function of user i has three terms. The first term is just the mean square error of estimator. I mentioned that the users also derive benefit from learning a good theta as they are taking, for instance, in our medical example, the drug, and they want to know whether it works or not. Also, the other term is the privacy cost, which is the per unit cost of privacy CI times this endogenized epsilon. And finally, we subtract the compensation or the payment that they receive, and this would be the utility of user. 
Users, of course, have this upside option of not joining, where in which case there would be no privacy loss, no compensation, and they will not have access to Theta Hat. So their best estimator would be just going with their single data that the MSC would be just variance of one single data. So the cost of their outside option would be just var. Now, with the user's utility in hand, it's time to cast the, pro the platform's problem. The platform's problem is about minim finding the best estimator while minimizing the total payments that the platform should pay. Here, for simplicity, we just take the sum. We could simply replace it by an evaded sum. This analysis will go through here. For the sake of the talk, I'm going to go with the easy case. And there are two conditions coming from the relation principle. The first one is the incentive compatibility, which says that if all the users report truthfully, the cost of user I is minimized when she also reports her privacy sensitivity truthfully. The other one is individual rationality, which says that the cost of user is better than the outside option it costs. Them. Here, Solving this optimization problem could be challenging because unlike the classic mechanism design, we have three things, payments, privacy loss levels, and estimators. And actually, they are affecting each other. Your choice of estimator will change the privacy loss level. And the change of privacy allocation will change the payments. So they are really intangible to each other. And in addition, unlike the Meyerson classic me classical mechanism design paper, here, the cost is nonlinear and, in fact, non-convex. But actually, the structure of the problem allows us to solve it efficiently for both central and local mechanisms. I don't have time to go over the details of the algorithms, but I just state the final result. In the central setting, we develop a score-based algorithms to solve the mechanism design problem, the optimization in time n log n. In the local setting, we develop an delta approximate solution, which solves it in polynomial time in n and 1 over delta. So the last sl two slides will be about comparing these two architectures. So far, I solved everything separately for central and local, but one may ask, how do they compare to each other? This, the answer to this question differs whether you look at it from platform's point of view or the users. From platform's perspective, we show that the platform always prefers central, meaning that the platform's optimal cost will be always weakly smaller for the central, which kind of makes sense, right? because in the central case, the platform gets the raw and non-private data and decides on making it private by itself, while in the local, the user is making it private before sharing it with the platform. However, for the user, the story depends on the privacy sensitivity. If the privacy sensitivity is small, meaning that the users want to learn the drug efficacy, they will prefer the central. But if it's high, meaning that the users care a lot about their privacy, they would prefer the local. OK, so with that, I'm going to conclude the talk here. This is just a recap of what we showed so far. The paper is all available online. You can use that QR code. And thank you very much for your attention. Thanks so much for the great talk. So uh, we can take about like maybe two questions right now before we go to the next uh, talk. Yeah. yeah. I feel that the sensitivity of privacy may be a, a complex thing. So it may depend on everyone. Uh, for example, some people may not care about a, a low uh, leak of privacy, but will be extremely be sensitive about a high risk of uh, privacy. So the privacy sensitivity, in my mind, should be a cost function from the leak of privacy to the cost to them. So uh, in your model, it is just a sensitivity level from low to high. So uh, what is the cost function of privacy in your model uh, for the low? Yeah, so 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 I'm, I, I, if I understand your question correctly, basically what we are taking here is kind of a linear function of the privacy loss epsilon i, and the coefficient of the linear would be that ci, which we call it privacy sensitivity, and users report that ci. I don't know if that answers your question, but yeah, but we are taking the linear cost here, but one can think of more general functions. Actually, the, one of the papers that I cited before at the beginning, uh, the, the paper by Aaron Ross and uh, Gosh, basically it is a general case. But, but as you can imagine, the problem is already non-convex. So, so if you go with general cost functions, uh, the, 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 opti the final optimization problem might not be necessarily tractable. group of people 
and she doesn't care for privacy, and we know that we have a seat on the outside, but if, if she doesn't care for yeah, privacy, so should, that, that, should I care for it? That, that's, that's a good question. So it goes to the externality in some sense, like whether someone, else, you, someone else's data will reveal something about you. Yeah, we, we really don't model in this work. We're assuming data are IID, but yeah, but that's a very interesting direction. But as you can imagine, it's going to make things more challenging, but that's a very, very interesting question. Yeah, and I think. I think we have two questions. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's already kind of like 512 and it's already behind the plenary, so maybe we should take the rest of the uh, yeah. questions. Yeah. Um, Apply and start the next talk, and that's fine. Yeah. Thank you. Well, let's uh, thank Kelly Rebecca again for the great talk.